Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our evening celebration on Easter Sunday. It's great, it's great to celebrate, isn't it, today that Jesus is alive. We've had a lovely day so far today. It's been tremendous. And uh, Tom and I are sort of sharing tonight. Tom's going to be speaking a bit later, and we have to be careful we don't take a step back here. We'll say more about that in a minute. But uh, Tom, what's been your favourite part of the day so far? Uh, we had an amazing nine o'clock um, Holy C Communion service this, this morning. That was one of the highlights. And, and then after that, we had a, a packed 10.30 in here. And one of the highlights for me was just sitting there and just receiving and not hearing what you were doing next to me. So I was really glad of that. Oh, that's, that's good. You were there and I wasn't. I know. But it was an amazing, amazing morning, and I'm sure this evening service will be equally amazing. It was, it was great fun. It was really good fun across our services and celebrations today. And as you may have gathered by taking a look behind Tom and I, um, on Easter Sunday, we've been trying to build in a habit, as actually the early church used to do, as they celebrated Jesus being alive. It was the moment, a key moment in the life of the church when people were baptized who were beginning that journey and wanted to make a statement of, yes, we want to follow Jesus. And so we are going to baptize four amazing people a bit later in our time. Ellie and I are going to share that part of the service. And so a special welcome to Lee and family. Lee's being baptized. And also, hey! And Amir is being baptized as well. Amir is over, over there and friends here as well. And also we have Becky being baptized. Becky's just here. Connor, great to see you guys here. And Arlo is being baptized as well. And um, Arlo is just over there. So brilliant. We'll come to that in a, in a little bit. A great celebration. Jesus is alive, and this is a symbol of that. And it's lovely. So excited about that. And Tom, you're speaking later on here. Any, uh, any thoughts on what you might say? Um, Something around the resurrection. Oh, good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. That sounds like a, a good plan, doesn't it? Yeah, good. Shall we, um, we should pray, uh, definitely. Why don't, if you're able to, why don't you join us in standing as we pray together and as we celebrate that Jesus is alive. We say, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your death on the cross which saves us from our sins. And Lord, we thank you for your uh, life, the resurrection that demonstrates your power over sin and death and that you are present with us now, Father. Lord, inspire our faith as we celebrate you. And we pray for a particular blessing on all the, the folks being baptized Because we hear it in the precious name of Jesus, the risen Lord. Let's join together in worship. Just to say this is part of our, our offering back to the Lord. And this is a generous act that we make as we worship and give thanks to Jesus. And we also count our, our pockets, our finances into that. And so as we worship tonight, you'll see there's a QR code on the screen. If you want to give to the life of the church or make a donation, you can do that that way. There is also a contact us giving point over there and a little box where you can pay for that if you'd like to do that as we worship together. So let's join together and worship. Lord, will the guys are going to be joining us in worship.
over our lives thank you Lord that as we stand before you that these praises meet you Lord thank you that somehow you are here by your spirit present Lord we say that we thank you that you are worthy Bible says there is no other name under heaven or earth by which people might be saved and Lord we thank you again for who you are and all that you've done in Jesus name Amen carry on worshipping in a slightly different way. We're coming back to singing in a, in a little little bit, so do grab a seat. Thanks to Will and Andrew and catch you in the band. Look at that, you got a little ripple of applause. That's good. Uh, I'm going to move over this way, which is my way of um, seeing if the camera people are awake. Um, and uh, going to invite Ellie and all those being baptised to come and join me. So here we go. We might need to just turn the, turn the camera to the left. There we go. Look at that. There we are, all on screen. And uh, so here we are. I said we're going to stand quite close to the edge of the pool, which means if you shuffle to the left, you're going to knock me in before we get there. Um, these are all the lovely and amazing people being baptized this evening. And uh, we thought as we head into this next few moments, we're going to hear a little bit from them as we... Uh, celebrate this moment as we give thanks uh, to Jesus for all that he's done. So, uh, how are we feeling? So, Emir, this um, seems like it's been a bit of a journey getting here. Why baptised tonight? 
I mean, I've never spoken on a mic before, so I don't know how loud this is. Uh, <laughs> and in my opinion, it wouldn't be a better day, and there wouldn't be a better day than today. And um, just to follow and worship Jesus and try to be the best version of myself. Fantastic. That's great. And it's been get, great to get to know you. Uh, Amir's been in my alpha group this time and uh, we've had fun together. It's been fantastic seeing all that God's doing in your life. And, um, and Lee, how about you? Coming to you next. What about you? Why baptism and why now? Um, Basically, I had an encounter with Jesus, and it kind of changed my life, and I just wanted to know more about him. And So I've been a Christian, we going to church since July last year, um, and I've just been adamant to get baptized as soon as possible. Fan- fantastic, yeah. I remember the, ur- the urgency of, I want to get baptized. That is fantastic. Ellie. That's amazing. Um, so, Becky, why do you want to be baptised? What's brought you to this place tonight? Um, I think for me, I've had a lot that's kind of gone in my life, but I feel like um, I feel this peace and that surpasses all understanding. So, yeah. That's just so precious. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us, Becky. And Arlo, why would you like to be baptised tonight? I had it written down on my phone, but I'm just going to wing it now. <laughs> um, Jesus has made like, the biggest transformation in my life. He's the best gift I've ever been given. And since July 29th last year, I've just been so much happier. He's the biggest transformation you can ever have. Wow, how wonderful. What amazing testimonies of what God has done in people's lives. That is so, so amazing to hear. And we're so delighted that you've made this step and that tonight we get a chance to join in with you in, uh, in the, this pool as we, as we baptize you. Now, there are some words on the screen that we're going to join in together, uh, both for, for these guys and for us as a congregation tonight. And so we're remembering that Jesus said to go and make disciples of all nations He said, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, Jesus said, I am with you always to the very end of the age. What a great promise that is as you're getting baptized tonight. And so we thank God this evening for Emir, for Lee, for Becky and Arlo who've come to be baptized. Jesus loves them and welcomes them into his church So we all get a part to play in these guys' journey in supporting them and encouraging them. So I ask you all, will you support these friends as they continue their journey of faith? And will you help them to live and grow within God's family? Well done. That's good good to know, isn't it? I've got people with you. And God knows each of us by name. We are his. And so there's a response from each of you that's needed. And so, Amir, are you ready to be baptized today as a sign of following Jesus? I am. And Lee, are you ready to be baptized today as a sign of following Jesus? I am. And Becky, are you ready to be baptized today as a sign of following Jesus? I am. And Arlo, are you ready to be baptized today as a sign of following Jesus? I am. Wonderful. <laughs> Those are the most definite I am's I think we've ever had. So that's, that's amazing. And now we come to this decision moment. We all wander far away from God. We lose our way. Jesus comes to find us and welcomes us home. And in baptism, we are responding to his call. Therefore, I ask these questions of you all. And we can all reply at the same time. Do you turn away from sin? Let's try that one again. (laughs) Don't worry, this is is one of the questions that people are not not most keen to say I do to. um, So here we go. Do you turn away from sin? Fantastic. Do you reject evil? Do you turn to Christ as saviour? And do you trust Jesus as Lord and your friend? And now we're going to sign you with the cross. So 
do this bit at the beginning. So Amir, receive the sign of the cross, the sign of his love. Do not be ashamed to confess Christ. You are his forever. And Lee, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross and do not be ashamed of Christ for you are his forever. Becky, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Do not be ashamed of Christ. You are his forever. And Arlo, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. Do not be ashamed of Christ. You are his forever. And together we say, stand bravely with him against all the powers of evil and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. And for all of you, may Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. And so as we think about this water, this amazing symbol of God's refreshing power in our lives and us dying to sin, and being alive to Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Jesus, your son, who himself was baptized in the River Jordan. We ask you to bless this water, that as these friends of ours are baptized in it, they may be cleansed in the water of life, and filled with your spirit may know that they are loved as your children, safe in Christ forever. Amen. And let's all of us affirm together with these who are being baptized our common faith in Jesus Christ. And so do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? And do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. And do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church together. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let's pop the next slide up there if we can. This is the baptism moment. And so we're going to jump into the pool. Ellie, let's, uh, after you. No, it's all right, we're in. We're in. And Amir. Okay, this is the moment that you've been building up to. This is the moment as you celebrate Jesus' love and all that he has for you. Just cross your hands over in front of you like that. So Amir, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lee, you're up next. Becky, which means you've got the microphone duties. Just in case you hadn't guessed, it is a bit chilly in here, fair to say. So Lee, this is that moment, that transforming work of Jesus that you talked about. This is him at work in your life. The promise that he'll never, ever leave you. He's with you forever. And so Lee... I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. 
All right. Cold. <laughs> Again, Becky, this is a moment that's been building for a long time and what a wonderful moment to join with you in as I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Here's this moment when we celebrate and we welcome these, these guys. And there should be a prayer, I think, on the screen. So this is the welcome of the church. This, in a sense, is like the entry into the life of the church. It says we're part of everyone else. We're joining in together. We're here serving alongside our friends here in this place at this time. And so there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. All of you, this is, I think... This is a different set of names on the screen. <laughs> one faith, one baptism. Amir, Lee, Becky, and Arlo. By one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. Together, we say. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. Let's just say a prayer for these guys. Father, we thank you so much for, for the wonderful work that you've been doing in their lives up to this point. Thank you for Amir, for, for Lee, for Becky, for Arlo, and for uh, the journey that you're leading them on. Thank you that this is just the beginning. God, that you have so much more as you've claimed them for your own. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Um, and we pray that you would equip them and give them everything that they need as they continue to follow you. Thank you that you don't leave us as orphans, but that you give us your spirit to walk with us every day of our lives. Your promise is that you're with us always to the end of the age. And we pray that for these guys, that that will be their experience as they journey each day with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give these guys a massive round of applause again. And let's turn some of what we've been watching and joining in with into sung worship again. Uh, and uh, Will and the guys in the band here are going to lead us in worship. So why don't we stand as we sing together? Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory Oh. 
on his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him back until it was a Dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in any. to be honest, but um, <laughs> do grab a seat. What an amazing encouragement that is, isn't it, to see folks being baptized in the life of the church. And maybe it's provoked in you a little thought for yourself of what that might mean for you, in which case you can come and have a conversation afterwards if you would like to be baptized as well. I've just realized, Tom, you're going to have to be very careful when you're standing here to speak, just so you don't fall back in. Don't get too excited. Now, as we uh, enter into this sort of this next few weeks, there's a few things coming up that we want to let you know about, and so here they are via Church News. Why not come and join us for our next Saturday breakfast on Saturday the 13th of April at 830 here in the auditorium, fantastic cooked breakfast and lots and lots of refreshments. Come and hear Joseph about his experience of moving from Hong Kong to the UK. It's a great event. The electoral roll is the Church of England's official list for those who worship at parish churches like St Michael's. If you're not on the electoral roll, we'd love to invite you to join. If you're over 16, you live in the parish or you've been worshipping here for six months or more, we'd love you to join the electoral roll. It enables you to vote and play a full part in the life of the church. And the link is below. You're invited to Alpha. Alpha is for the open-minded, the curious, and those who want to explore a little bit more about what life is all about. And each session involves food, film, and a discussion where it's an opportunity for you to say whatever you like in an informal, relaxed way. Everyone has a seat at the table. No matter what your background or belief, you're all welcome. Stay curious, try Alpha. Don't forget our weekly prayer diary available each week with daily prompts for prayer. And there's a link to that in our weekly email, which goes out every Friday. Do get connected if you're not yet receiving that. Great. Let's pray for Tom. Which way are we go? We're going to move it that way, do you think? Right. Get ready, cameras. You don't trust yourself. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Good, let's pray, shall we, for us and for Tom as we listen in these next few moments. So, Lord, we thank you for this passage of Scripture that we're going to look at. Thank you, Lord, 
that you are alive. Lord, may we hear your voice calling to us this evening through what Tom shares. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, happy Easter, everyone. Um, And congratulations to those who are baptized. Absolutely fantastic. Did you know in the Middle Ages, on, a, on Easter Day, they, um, those leading services always told jokes? Did you know this? Um, it was mandatory on Easter Day that you told a joke in order to represent that God played the ultimate joke on Satan um, because of the crucifixion on Friday. Three days later, Jesus rises from the dead. The joke is on the enemy. The joke is on death. And so they told jokes. Um, so I have to tell a joke. Um, just for uh, medieval history's sake, if anything else. Sister Edith and Sister Maud were driving along. They were missionaries in, uh, in the early 20th century in South America. And uh, they're driving along, um, and suddenly they're surrounded by a whole load of Amazonian tribes people. And these tribes people start banging on the windows and feeling and seemingly a little bit aggressive. And Sister Edith said to Sister Maud, Sister Maud, Sister Maud, show them your cross, show them your cross. And Sister Maud winds down the window, sticks her head out and goes, Why don't you get lost, a lot of you? No, 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 no. That was, it was for medieval history. It was for medieval history. I had to. I had to. So we are, we are in a sermon series. It's Easter Day, but we're in a sermon series where we've been looking at the questions that Jesus asked. Um, and Jesus asked a whole load of I mean, extraordinary questions. And we've discovered that some of the questions that he asked, um, he, he often didn't give a lot of answers to the questions that he asked. But they were very insightful. Um, and they were quite wonderful. And it was a rabbinic tradition to ask all these questions. And here we're going to be looking at this evening the question that Jesus asked Mary, which is, why are you weeping? Why are you crying, Mary? And so we're going to focus on Mary Magdalene, one of the great heroes of this story. Um, She features briefly in the Gospels, not very much, and Luke and Mark tell us that she had been healed by Jesus of several spirits. Um, And all the Gospels mention her at the crucifixion and at the resurrection, where she takes center stage. She's the first person in human history to witness, arguably, the greatest moment in human history. So I'm going to read this little passage to you. Listen out to how Mary reacts and behaves, the things that she says, the things that she does. So, early on the first day of the week, While it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Someone she's assuming that someone had stolen the body, that's her conclusion. And so she goes, I'm going to skip a little bit of the passage, but she goes and fetches the men. She fetches the disciples, because obviously the men will know what to do. (laughs) Peter and John have a race to the tomb, because apparently having a race seems like the right thing to do at that time. Um, John, who is the author, feels the need to tell, tell us that he outran Peter for some reason. And Peter, because he's so brave, goes in but sees the empty tomb. And it says that they didn't fully understand, but they believed, which is quite ambiguous in a way. And then it says, then the disciples went back to where they were staying. And here we pick up the story. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, 
Why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he... And she told them that he had said these things to her. I'm going to order um, our exploration of this story around three very simple things that I think Mary kind of does. <laughs> just three, and she does a lot more, but I'm just going to focus on three. Just three very simple things. She wakes, she weeps, and she witnesses. She wakes, she weeps, and she witnesses. So in verse 1, it says, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary went to the tomb. She wakes. I'm struck by this very tiny little detail in this story. She heads off early. Now, we don't know whether, did she actually go to sleep? Possibly not. She is awake. Um, Grief-stricken and distraught, there's something that compels her to go to the tomb. But why so early? Why does she, what is it about? Why does she need to, to go so early? Is it because it's before it gets too hot? Possibly, that's probably. Um, so that she isn't seen, she's wanting to do this um, hidden because it's quite a fraught and energized and dangerous time. But the point is, I want us to draw attention to is that she's awake at this time. And why is this important? Now, when I was reading the passage this week, I was reminded when Jesus urges his disciples to stay awake in Gethsemane. Do you remember that moment? Stay awake. He urges them. They kept falling asleep. And then in Ephesians 5, Paul writes in Ephesians 5, he says, Wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Just reminded of that um, little moment. And, And Mary does just that, doesn't she? She wakes up. Oh, sleeper, she wakes, and Christ does indeed shine on her in the most extraordinary way. Um, I was looking at some paintings on, on, online, um, all the paintings of resurrection stories, and I noticed that if you look at many of them, and I've put a whole load here, every single one of these paintings have features sleeping people in it. People who are asleep, the guards who are asleep. And it seemed to me that the artist was wanting to draw out something of wake up and see and be a witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the most amazing moment in the history of the cosmos. And yet there are sleeping people in the story. Here, I think it's the guards snoozing their way through the most significant moment in the history of moments. Let's not be like them. That's my first little point. Let's stay awake. Let's stay awake to what God is doing. Not just in this grand story, but in our lives, in our day-to-day lives. What is he doing in my life? What is he doing in your life? And are you awake to it? What's the equivalent of sleeping guards throughout the resurrection? I was thinking it's probably, you know, they'd be, they'd be on Candy Crush and the resurrection was happening. It's the, the distraction, isn't it, that we can all get. And the challenge for us, let's be awake. Let's be alert like Mary, who was awake to the tomb. This stuff is important. I was on Twitter earlier today, perhaps asleep, um, and I came across this tweet. Easter isn't some safe, sweet, sentimental, religious tradition. It's a celebration of a world-altering event that demands attention and a decision. It demands my attention, and it demands some kind of decision from us. And so, a prayer after this first point. Lord, show me where I am numbed to what you are doing. Keep me from distraction. Keep me awake and alert to what you're doing in the world and in my life. Like Mary. Amen. So, she wakes. She's awake. Second one, she weeps. So it says, now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. 
a lot of tears in this passage. And it says, as she wept, more tears, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. There's something so striking, so beautiful about Mary's wholehearted grief and how she expresses it in this story. She chooses to stay at the tomb when Peter and John peg off back. And I'm like, why does she stay? What is it about this moment that makes her stay by the tomb? I think I would have run back with the boys. And I wonder if she, well, I know, if she'd gone with them, she hadn't stayed, she would have missed this extraordinary historical moment. And her staying, it occurred to me, her staying takes courage, doesn't it? It must have been quite an eerie place, very early in the morning, gloomy, an unsettling place with lots of caves, lots of tombs, alone and vulnerable. So courage, but also emotional courage as well. I love that she stays in her grief. She stays with it, tears streaming down her eyes. And I think this shows the fact that she does that, shows a willingness, a courage to confront or face up to the hard things, the difficult things. She stays in her grieving. When was the last time you had a good cry? Don't say now. <laughs> you don't need to answer that. Maybe you're not a crier. Plenty of people say, well, I don't really cry. I think we're all, we all have tears. Some of us just hold them back. Some of us don't really know how to express them. Some of us get frustrated because they come when we don't really want them to come. But here, there's a beauty in Mary's tears that seem to flow so effortlessly. You know, in our culture, there's, an, there's a bit of a shame attached to crying, isn't there? We, we tend to do it in a hidden way. Often, if we are doing it with other people, we'll go, I'm, I'm so sorry, we apologize for our tears. Why do we apologize for our tears? Not for Mary. And it's certainly not a sign of, her, of weakness in any way. I love this from Washington Irving, the writer. There is a sacredness in tears. They are not a mark of weakness, but of power. And certainly that power is expressed in Mary's tears right in that moment. It says in the Psalms, they who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. And she she sowed in tears and she reaps in joy. Back to the passage. She peers into the tomb. Her eyes blurred with tears. She can't quite see properly, but she does see angels who ask her, why are you crying? And she says, they've taken away my Lord. And as she says this, she hears a voice, which I think is behind her. She turns around and sees Jesus standing there. And it says, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. And he asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Notice it's not what, it's who. He knows that she is looking for somebody. Thinking it's the gardener, she says, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. I love her tenacity. I love her courage. I love her strength in that line. I'm going to go and get him. And in that moment, Jesus says, Mary. Why does he ask, why are you crying? It's a really good question, isn't it? We were thinking about this this morning. Why does he ask, why are you crying? And how does he ask, why are you crying? I used to be a drama teacher, and I used to get kids, when they were trying to, struggling with a line, to sort of put different emphasis on each different word. Why are you crying? That just sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Sounds a bit sort of ominous. Why are you crying? That sounds a bit harsh, flippant. Why are you crying? I mean, it's them should be crying, not you. No, she's just on her own, so that doesn't quite work either. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? There's a tenderness to it. I think probably a little bit of emphasis on the tears here. We'll never know how he said it. We'll never really know why he said it. I've got an inkling. But one of the things I notice is that he doesn't explain things to her at that moment. I kind of want an explanation. Do we not want an explanation in this little scene? What could he have said? You see, I would have loved it if he'd said, Mary, wipe away your tears. Here I am. This is what I was trying to get at the other night. 
I had to go through death so that I could conquer its power once and for all. But God has raised me up as I always knew he would. So all who come to me and live in eternal, abundant life, starting now. There's no more condemnation for sin, no more judgment. I stand before you as the living hope. Now, go and tell everyone. All those things that I've just said are true. They are truth. And if you want to hear it, this is the gospel. This is the beauty of the gospel. If you want to hear a little bit more, I really encourage you to go along um, to one of our Alpha courses. So the Alpha starts um, in early May. Sai is going to tell us a little bit more about that later. But I love this. Isn't it typical of Jesus, for those of you who know him a little bit? In the moment of his greatest triumph, in the moment of his exaltation, in the moment of his resurrection, this is it. What does he do? He takes time to inquire after this crying woman. I love that. This is his glory. This is the moment of glory. But he moves towards her relationally as the very first thing he does as a resurrected Christ. He speaks right into her grief, right into that place of pain, heartache, suffering, which is what he does. He does for us. There are many people here, and I myself can attest to this, of God himself speaking right into that place of difficulty, hardship, suffering, and pain that we might have in our lives. And I love that he, this is the first thing that he does. And then he affirms the tenderness, the closeness of their relationship by saying her name, Mary. And the penny drops for her at hearing her name spoken. You know, I think John, um, in this, he wants us to remember Jesus saying in John chapter 10, the shepherd calls his own sheep by name, and the sheep follow because they know his voice. The shepherd knows the sheep's name, and the sheep knows his voice. And here in that little moment, we have the shepherd saying her name, and her identifying the shepherd's voice. Do you know his voice. Do you know his voice? Because the fact is, whether we've been Christians for many, many, many years or for 20 minutes, Jesus stands before each and every one of us as a resurrected Christ. And I believe with all my heart, he says before us our names, as he does Mary's. If he's overcome death, if he's broken the death barrier once and for all, if he is alive today and he stands before us seeking connection, relationship, friendship with you and I. Do you know his voice? Saying your name. Ed. Lee. Maria. Anna, saying our names. Can we hear him? And how are we going to respond? You know, for some of us, it's uh, la, 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 I don't want to hear this. Um, sometimes we just need to take our fingers out of our ears and really listen, because he is speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. Do we dare hear him? So Mary wakes, she's awake, she weeps. And then she witnesses. But does she stop crying? Does she stop crying? No, Ed, I, I, I don't think she stops crying. Of course not. You see, tears of sorrow and tears of joy, uh, that, you know, it's a fine little membrane between sorrow and joy. We tend to think of it as, oh, I'm really sad over here, and I'm really joyful over here. But there's, you know, I remember one of my kids pointing out a lady at a wedding and just saying quite loudly when they were really little, why is she crying? I thought weddings are supposed to be happy. But there's something of the sorrow and joy in this particular moment. This is a very human, beautiful moment of, of, of sorrow and joy and then sorrow. They're sort of mixed together. And I love this bit from William Blake. Do you know, do you know this? It's quite famous. Joy and woe are woven fine, clothing for the soul divine. Wow. Joy and woe are woven fine, 
clothing for the soul divine. Mary is clothed in Christ as she expresses her joy and her woe. And the resurrection makes sense both of her joy, but it also, I think, makes sense of her grief as well. As it does our grief and our suffering and our sorrow, we've just been singing that yes, we will, we will grieve and we will, we will suffer in this world and in this life. But there is a hope because Christ is risen where there will be no more tears, where there will be no more sorrow in heaven when Jesus returns. So Jesus tells her that he can't stay. So remember the joy? So we've gone from grief to joy and then to sadness again. I'm not staying, he says. And the reunion is short-lived. He says, do not hold on to me. I love that. He just gives an indication of what's actually going on in that little moment. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascended to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. <laughs> it is an ex- this, is, this is a massive, massive moment here. Jesus is giving Mary a woman who has a checkered and questionable past and a woman in that culture and in that time to become the first witness of one of the greatest moments in the history of histories. That is a massive moment. And I always remember hearing this for the first time years and years ago. Someone said, if they were making this stuff up, they would not have given a woman to be the primary first witness to the resurrection. It chimes as of authenticity here. It absolutely does. Because there's no way you would, you would say, well, Peter was the first. No, no, no. Mary Magdalene was the first witness. And she goes to the disciples and she She says, I've seen the Lord. So Mary wakes, she weeps, and she witnesses. Why don't we have the band coming up, guys? Um, Why don't you come up as I come into land? Mary walks away from an encounter with the risen Christ, and she's changed, obviously, forever. And for some of you here, you you might think, well, it's easy for her. She actually saw the risen Jesus before her. I wish I had that. I wish I had that. Now, none of us are going to see the resurrected Christ standing before us. But by the Holy Spirit, there are many of us here who can attest to being transformed by Jesus. And I just remember it was Ale who said that she had been transformed changed by the risen Christ. And that is what's on offer for all of us this Easter day. And I just want to say to where, where are those, put your hand up if you were baptized today, not just generally today. Yeah, hi guys. I'm sure there were four. I can only see, two. oh, yes, I'm here. And Arlo, she? On the balcony, Arlo, hello, well done, excellent. Um, sorry, but I just wanted just to speak to you specifically and to all of us, I suppose, who have been baptized. You see, as, as Mary walked away from that moment, we too walk away from our baptisms. And there is something similar to what has happened here, to what Mary encountered, the resurrection. As you guys know, as you went down under the water and came up, you are participating in something of Christ's resurrection, his burial and his resurrection into new life. Like Mary, you walk away transformed. And all of us who have been baptized walk away from our baptisms transformed. And I always love, I always love, they're not here anymore because it's dried, but I love seeing the footprints, the squelchy footprints on the towels as people, as the baptized leave, because it reminds me of a prayer. It reminds me of a prayer which says, as we are filled with God's love through Jesus Christ, we overflow that love to everyone we meet. We are filled. You guys, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. That water of life gushes from you as it does all those who know and love the Lord Jesus. And it says, this is our baptismal identity. This is our identity in Jesus. May we walk wet this week. May we walk wet this week and leave the footprints of God's love 
everywhere we go. Squelch, 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 squelch. And not just, obviously, you're all dry now, but that's the idea. We walk in the identity of our baptisms, walking wet wherever we go. So, dear friends, Mary woke. Let's stay awake. Let's be vigilant to what God is doing in this age and then in this day. And I think God is doing all sorts of things in our world at the moment. Let's be like Mary and we bring our whole selves to him every day. And then finally, let's witness. Let's go out and be a witness like Mary. Let's not stop telling others of what we have seen and what we have heard. Amen. I wonder if you guys might play a little bit and we're going to say a prayer if that's okay. Why don't we stand together? Let's stand. If you're able to. I wonder what's landed for you this evening. So many things have gone on. We've sung a lot of songs. We've said some prayers. We've witnessed four baptisms. We've heard this amazing story of Mary. Just thinking that I've been talking about Jesus standing before each and every one of us. And he asked Mary a specific question. And I wonder if Christ is asking each and every one of us a question this evening. And I wonder what that question is. So let's take a moment of quiet and we'll, we'll ask the Lord by the Spirit to speak to us. And he'll speak to us through our imaginations. Don't worry. He will use our brains, our pictures and our imaginations in our, um, in our minds to speak to us. So Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Speak to us this evening. question are you asking of me? Do you believe me? Why are you withholding? Do you know what I think of you? what your answer is just be honest just in your head what's your answer is it a yes I'm going to say a prayer and if you want to echo this prayer in your hearts then so be it if you just want to listen then that's absolutely fine as well Jesus Christ, I thank you that you died for me. I thank you that you took all my sin, my sorrow, my heartache, my pride, my hopelessness, my jealousy, my comparison, my anger, shoulders on the cross I receive your forgiveness I'm sorry where I've just been proudful and not walked the way that you want me to walk and I receive you in my life this evening come Holy Spirit and give me a life. Be born again in me this evening once more. I receive you by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a song. Um, in that time, there's going to be one or two people who are going to be coming up to the sides here and here. And if you'd like, if you prayed that prayer for the first time in your life, then come up and I'd love to, to speak to you or come and speak to Sai or Ellie. I'd love to say hi. If there's been something that's come up 
that you just would love to um, pray about with someone, then you're welcome to do that as well. But we're going to sing a song now, and then Sai will end the service in it, our celebration in it, five, five minutes or so. I stand in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. To my sins and my sorrows, he made them his very suffered and died alone. Sing how marvelous, how wonderful, and my soul shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my soul. At last shall see, it will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. Singing how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. sing that song that we are reminded of how amazing, how marvellous your love for us. A love not in theory but in practice. A love not just to be thought about, to be experienced. And we thank you Lord for those things that you've spoken to us this evening. Lord help us to, to go squelch, squelch, squelch into this week to leave footprints of your grace and glory and goodness wherever we go that we would follow your heart and your purposes and the good news of Jesus would spread out from this room across this area this, these communities, this city, this region that hearts might be transformed by the love of Jesus together here this evening there are prayer team available either side and just a couple of thoughts as that occurred to me as Tom was speaking if you're here this evening and weeping has been a painful experience this week that you've been crying over a particular set of circumstances that seem hard to control or hard to address if that's you just allow someone to pray for you you don't need to give away details just to say please pray and the team either side would be happy to do that 
also had a picture of somebody sort of with the, their, the phone, their phone pressed against their forehead. And there was some news that had been text or WhatsApp message to them or something that they'd be responding to on their phone and it had caused tears or breakdown. If that's you, please don't go before someone might pray for you. also a, a kind of a, a sense for those of us carrying heavy burdens and particularly heavy burdens of care for other people people you brought with you in your mind if you like or circumstances where you're caring for others if that's you I think it's that sense of the Lord wanting to strengthen you as we pray this evening and as Tom said, if you made a prayer, a commitment to Christ tonight, then come and stand with someone and we would love to pray for you, having made that decision. We need each other in these moments and we're happy to stand with you and to pray. And as Tom mentioned, go to the homepage of our website and you'll see a sign up for the next taster for our Alpha course, which begins on the 1st of May. We'd love to see you at that taster evening. And details can be found on the homepage of our website. So let's continue to worship together. Teams of people available either side. And uh, just come forward as and when you want someone to pray for you about one of those things or indeed anything else. This is a kind of a holy moment, a holy space where we get to stand alongside each other. To be the family that we talked about in that baptism liturgy. That never goes away. Whether you move to different parts of the world or different churches, we are family. And we get to stand with each other in these moments. So bless you. Well done, those of you who got baptised. Let's give them a, a hug. Um, if they happen to be near you, um, just hug them uncontrollably until they gasp for breath. Bless you guys. Have a great week. And uh, catch up with you next week.
Yeah.